All right, guys, welcome to implicit differentiation, one of the last rules that we're going to talk about when we speak about uh, derivatives. Uh, so implicit differentiation uh, happens when you have two different variables. Most commonly, you're going to have an x and a y together. Uh, so a couple things to remember, uh, use y equals. Uh, Use if uh, y equals is uh, difficult to find. So meaning, if I give you an equation, you have x and y uh, on one side of an equation, and you can't so solve for y very easily, then we're going to use implicit differentiation. Okay, implicit. So a variable is not explicitly defined. When we have y equals something, say y equals sine of x, that's explicit. That's an equation explicitly solved for y. So if we can't get y equals easily we're going to use implicit differentiation. And a couple key things. When you take the derivative of anything that involves y, you take the derivative normally, but then you have to multiply it by y prime of x or dy dx. Now, mostly I'll show you this, dy dx. Then you have to resolve for dy dx. Okay? This would be the derivative. So you're looking for the derivative, so you want dy over dx equals some function. Okay, so those are the key things. Remember that when you take the derivative of y, pretend like you're taking the derivative of x, but then multiply it by dy dx. Okay, resolve the equation then. So let's look at some examples. In example one, we have if x squared plus y squared equals 7, find dy dx. So this is what we mean. We have two different variables on the same side. Now I could solve for x or excuse me, solve for y fairly easily, but then I would have a square root. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the derivative, derivative implicitly. So the derivative of my function, x squared plus y squared equals 7, is, well, the derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of 2y is, or excuse me, y squared is 2y. And now here, since you took the derivative of something that has a y in it, you have to multiply it by dy dx. The derivative of a constant is 0. So there's the change. That's the important part there. So now we look and say, well, I need to get dy dx by itself so I can know what the derivative is. So first thing I did is I subtracted four, uh, subtracted 2x from both sides. And so I'm left with 2y times dy dx equals negative 2x. Well, if I'm multiplying these two pieces together, to get dy dx by itself, I have to divide each side by 2y. That's what I've done here. I can simplify my 2s, which become negative 1 over 1. So I'm just left with negative y, x over y. And that's the derivative dy dx. So here's that whole process of what I said on the first slide. You have two different variables y isn't necessarily easy to solve for, so I take the derivative of every piece, and whenever I take the derivative of something containing y, I multiply it by dy dx, and then I resolve the equation for dy dx. So the derivative of this function is negative x over y. Now, in the second example, we've changed it. We've calculated, we're going to calculate the derivative if x cubed plus y cubed equals 1. So I rewrote. I'm taking the derivative of this equation. Two variables, two different variables. OK, so I take the derivative of each piece. The derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. The derivative of y cubed is 3y squared. But notice again, I took the derivative with a y term, so I multiply it by dy dx. The derivative of any constant is 0. So now, uh, again, I, I just have to resolve the equation for dy dx. So I subtract the 3x squared from both sides. And again here, now I just have to divide each side by 3y over uh, 3y squared. When I do that, I get negative 3x squared divided by 3y squared, which is negative x squared over y squared. So that is the derivative of this function. We're going to get into some more challenging problems, and this is one of the more challenging problems that you're going to see, particularly when you look at differentiating x cubed minus xy plus y cubed equals 1. I rewrote the derivative here. I'm going to take the derivative, and notice I boxed here in red xy. That's the product rule inside here. So that gets really tricky. 
because you're going to have this minus sign. So let's take the derivative and see what we get. The derivative of x cubed is 3x squared minus the quantity in green now is the derivative of that product rule. x times the derivative, of, you know, excuse me, first times the derivative of the second plus second times the derivative of the first. So x times, well, the derivative of y is just 1, but since we took the derivative of y, I have to multiply this by dy over dx plus second times derivative of the first. Now, second times the derivative of x, the derivative of x is 1, so we're just left with a y here. Now, you might say, well, why isn't this, multi why isn't this y term multiplied by dy dx? And the answer is, we didn't take the derivative of this y. Remember, first times the derivative of the second plus second times the derivative of the first. So that is just a loan. So I close off my parentheses, plus the derivative of y cubed is 3y squared. I took the derivative of a y term. There's the multiplication, dy dx. Derivative of a constant is 0. So it's important to know that we have two terms with dy dx now inside and right here. So the first thing I did is I just brought the 3x squared over. I subtracted that from both sides. And then I distributed the negative. I have negative x dy dx minus y plus 3y squared dy dx equals negative 3x squared. So the only thing I did here, again, I brought this term over. And then I distributed the negative. So here we are. Now, if we're solving for dy dx, and two terms have dy dx, you have to get dy dx alone. If two terms have that in common, factor out the dy dx, and that's what I've done here. This term and this term have the dy dx, so I factored it out. I also snuck the y term over here already. I just added the y, and so when you have these two terms here, just these two terms, I can factor out the dy dx, which I do, and I'm left with negative x plus 3y squared, and that equals negative 3x squared plus y. To get dy dx by itself, divide by this term, and I've done that here. So here's my derivative. I've got dy dx by itself. It's negative 3x squared plus y over negative x plus 3y squared. And so please be careful. This is a tougher problem with a product rule. Okay, that minus sign here is very, very, can be very costly. A lot of times we only give it to the x, but it's the whole thing, minus the product, the derivative of xy. So the derivative of our function is here. This last one involves trig uh, and taking the derivative. You're going to see one of these very similar to your exam. You have sine of xy equals x. So let's take the derivative of our function, d dx of sine of xy equals x. So you, you're going to take the derivative like you would. Derivative of sine is cosine of the inside times, there's another product rule in there, x times y. So first times derivative of the second plus second times derivative of the first. It's the same thing from the last problem right here. Same thing, xy. So I took the derivative of xy, which is x times dy dx, right? First times the derivative of the second. The derivative of y is 1, but you have to multiply that by dy dx because you're taking the derivative of a y term. Plus y here, uh, that's in parentheses, and then uh, equals 1 because the derivative of x is just equal to 1. Now again, we've got to get d, dy dx by itself. So this can be a little more tricky. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the cosine first. We're going to divide both sides by cosine of xy. This is multiplication. So get rid of the cosine xy, and that's what I've done here. And I'm left with x dy dx plus y equals 1 over cosine xy. But 1 over cosine of x, isn't that just secant? Okay, so be careful what I did here. I have x dy dx plus y equals secant xy. So I replace this 1 over cosine xy with secant xy. So now all I have to do is subtract y and then divide by x because this is multiplication. Subtract y, divide by x, I'm done. So secant of xy minus y divided by x is the derivative. 
Okay, that's the derivative of this function. Ooh, this last one. This one's what we call a doozy. So now I'm combining product rule x times sine y equals cosine of x plus y. Find the derivative. This one is a lot of steps and it can get confusing. Okay, so let's just start at the beginning. We have x sine y of x. So first times the derivative of the second plus second times the derivative of the first. So right here, there is your product rule. And it has to be product rule. So x times the derivative of sine y, which is cosine y, times dy dx, right? Because we have to take the derivative of that function inside. The derivative of y is just 1, which is multiplied by dy dx here, OK? Because you took that derivative. Plus second times derivative of the first. And again, notice how this second term is not multiplied by dy dx. It's because we didn't take the derivative of a y term here. And that's equal to, now i got to go on the right side of the equation. The derivative of cosine is negative sine of what's in the middle times 1 plus dy dx. Because the derivative of x is 1, the derivative of y is 1 times dy dx. OK, so now look what we have. We've got dx, dy dx in here, dy dx over here. So we've got some work to do. So what I did first is I distributed the x to both terms. So you have x cosine of y, or excuse me, I just rewrote this, didn't distribute, my, my apologies. So I have x cosine of y plus sine of y equals, I distributed on the right side, my apologies. So I distributed negative sine of x plus 1 times 1 is itself minus sine of x plus y times dy dx. So I distributed here and just left off the parentheses here. So the big thing here is the distribution on the right side. So now I've got my, my dy dx terms on the outside. So what did I do? I added this term over. So look here in red. dy dx x cosine y plus dy over dx sine of x plus y. And I snuck this guy over here as well. So look at the right side, negative sine of x plus y minus sine of y. So I brought this term over and brought sine of y over in this step here. Now I can factor out the dy dx. Two terms with the same term factored out. So I factor out the dy dx and I'm left with x cosine of y plus sine of x plus y equals, I just left the right side alone. Now, to get dy dx by itself, all I have to do is divide by these two, these, this expression here. And that's what I did. So my derivative is negative sine of uh, x plus y plus sine of y. I've actually factored out that negative here because they were both negative, divided by x cosine of y plus sine of x plus y. So that is implicit differentiation. When x is, or y is not easy to solve for, and when we have two different variables together, we use implicit differentiation. Okay? Remember that anytime you're taking the derivative of a y term, it has to be multiplied by dy dx. Once you take the derivative, you have to resolve your equation for dy dx. We've seen, seen some examples where only one term has a dy dx, and the last few we've seen multiple terms with dy dx. Okay? If you have any questions or comments, please email me at nicholas.bennett at dc.gov, or you can type them below, uh, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.